Hi, and welcome to Healthy Life Hacks. I'm Jennifer Jeffries, the present day wise woman, a realistic naturopath coming to you from the surfing beaches of Australia. This podcast is for those who are wanting to really rock their lives and health and live from a place of prevention. Let's get into today's episode. What makes you happy? I thought I'd ask that question like I was out in the surf this morning, sunrise surfing. The, the surf wasn't perfect. It was really choppy. The, the wind was coming from the wrong direction, but I was just blessed out of my brain. It's incredible. I'm like, ah, I want to talk about your happy hormones because they get triggered by our day-to-day life. And that's what I'm going to talk about in this. So what are your happy hormones? Well, we've got dopamine, we've got oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins. They're known as your happy hormones. So let's jump in. I want to talk about dopamine first. This is a big one. Dopamine, well, no, they're all big ones, but um, it's really interesting that uh, our happy hormones can be triggered by our actions in life, not just like foods and stuff. And interesting that dopamine is our achievement hormone. It's the one that we get when we achieve something. We get a hit of dopamine when we achieve something. So yeah, dopamine is all about that thing that it's the, the happy hormone that we need to motivate us to achieve things. It's needed to make us strive towards, you know, achieving our goals and being successful in life. Dopamine is also known as the success hormone for that same reason. It gives you that kind of happy mood, elevates the mood, keeps you optimistic and positive and energized and like, "Ah, I can do it. Is that I can do it thing. It it gives us that, that buzz to be able to drive and strive for our goals, which is really good with that confidence, that kind of certain grounded confidence. Now, I find it interesting that cocaine and dopamine have a similar kind of hit. Cocaine gives us that hit because it blocks dopamine from being released. And that's what gives that kind of build up and gives that euphoria, which is really cool. Now, knowing, this is a secret guys, knowing that dopamine is going to be, a tr- a, is going to be triggered with you achieving things, you can instigate, you can trigger it instead of having to use drugs. And I know people you know, incredibly successful entrepreneurs who, you know, their choice, they do drugs. But I also know some who have changed that energy, changed that vibe and diverted it and been able to get those those hits of happies from achieving their goals instead of doing it with drugs. Interesting. So I did want to mention that. But the secret is to actually, you've got your great big goal, whatever it is. So even with me surfing, So if I think about me, you know, me achieving in in my and progressing in my surfing in the future, without a doubt, I will nose ride my surfboard. I will walk cross step the full length of my longboard and I will absolutely hang 10 toes off the front of it. And I can't wait. Every morning in the surf, there's this gorgeous woman called Wano who does exactly what I want. I'm not there yet. I'm not. I break my surfing down into little achievable goals. So even the goal for me to, to consistently surf five days a week, I me doing that, I know brings me closer to achieving my goal. So having the discipline and and tapping into that that dopamine is like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm going surfing, going surfing, I'm doing my five days a week. It's going to help me walk that board sooner than later. I can do those little things, and that gives me all the little hits that keep me going to achieve my goals where so many people that's just like, well, the world will be perfect when you get to the the big goal at the end. Yeah, but you need to keep the motivation and the drive to be able to achieve that on the way. The easiest way to tap into it is by giving yourself little uh, goals, things, steps that you can do daily and weekly that you can achieve. Because every time we achieve something, like I'm the queen you can't see this if you're listening to it on a podcast, but I am holding up post-it notes. I am the I am the queen of little notes because what happens for me is every time I achieve, I tick something off my list, I screw up that little note and I toss it away and I can't, it just feels so good. I can't tell you how good it feels. For me, that works for me to help me keep achieving everything I want to achieve. So the same with you. If you want to increase the happy hormone dopamine, start breaking your big goals down into little ones daily and weekly that you can achieve to keep you motivated and on track. So that's that's the bottom line on dopamine. Let's talk about oxytocin. Now, oxytocin is your attachment molecule. This is the one that, you know, heart emotions, like things like loyalty and trust and empathy and generosity. And it, it's that 
you know, if you used to work in the jobs where back in the days when people worked in buildings, not during COVID like we are right now, with people working from home. And I know some of you have been struggling being isolated away from people because it's that connection to people that turns on your oxytocin. So it's it's where we help people. It's where we mentor people. We compliment people, giving genuine compliments, just sharing a laugh with people. All those kind of things trigger little bursts of oxytocin. And oxytocin is a very real happy hormone, but it's about us being connected and with people that feeds that one in us. The next one's endorphins. And this is the one I play with so much when I'm surfing. I love it. So this is the one that it, it gives us our determination and it's our bliss hormone. Bliss hormone. That's it. And it's about lifting our mood and bringing down physical pain and emotional stress. That's it. And it, it, generally when it's tapped in, when you're running on, you know, your endorphins are high, you've got a really gorgeous mental focus, which is super cool. The secret to being able to, to tap into increasing your endorphins is to laugh. And I know that there's this big, very real thing out there called laughing yoga. Do it or do what you need to laugh. And I've spoken on previous podcasts about the fact that when I eat my meals, I eat my meals watching funny things. I, I watch comedies while I'm eating. Why? Because I know the chemical reactions that change in my body when I'm doing it. And I know that helps with digestion and everything. But if you're wanting to increase your endorphins, laugh. So I promise every time I go on my ass, <laughs> or actually not even on my ass, but head first off a wave and my legs go flying, I laugh my guts out. I honestly do. I have so much fun surfing because I know I have to fall off to get better. So every time I do it, it's just like, <laughs> and it cracks me up sometimes, but because everything kind of goes flying, but it works for me. So I, I consciously, I put that fun element into the things I do. And, and the way that we strive to achieve any goal is that we're going to have learning experiences along the way. Keep them light. It's important. And then the other one is serotonin. So serotonin is actually our satisfaction hormone. It's the one that keeps our mood really stable and that feeling of just kind of general happiness and well-being and feeling really good. And it really impacts the whole body. But particularly, it's also really affects things like eating and your digestive system and also sleeping. Now, this is the one that uh, kind of helps us feel more confident in ourselves, raises our self-esteem and self-worth, that inner satisfaction and sense of purpose. And it is the most common one that is kind of duplicated into a drug. Most of your antidepressant drugs on the market are playing with serotonin because it does. It, it raises self-esteem and self-worth in, in, in the process. Serotonin is also excellent battling cortisol, the stress hormone. So I've talked a lot in the past about cortisol and bringing it back into balance with things like adaptogens. But just doing things to raise your serotonin is going to help with that as well. So some of the best ways to increase your serotonin is the first one is to get out in the sunlight, natural sunlight. I surf every day. Well, no, I don't. I surf five days a week and I surf generally sunrise. I love it. I just love it. Although it's summer at the moment and it's a little bit testing because the sun gets up very early in the morning. It is well and truly light by just after 4 a.m. So for me, that's a way I catch a dose of sunlight every day. I do it in the time that's not, you know, that it's not the burning in the middle of the day, 10 till 2 kind of thing. But get out there, whatever it is. If you go and eat your lunch in the sun, do things, but get out into the sun. Use protection if you need, but you still need a little bit of you know, early morning or late afternoon. Get that sunlight to increase your serotonin. It's big. And you've probably heard about SAD. And you've probably heard about SAD, which is a seasonal affective disorder. You know, my very first ever speaking gig as a naturopath was um, I flew up to, in those days, it was called Irian Jaya, West Papua. And I was employed by a big copper mine called Freeport. And a big American copper, copper mine employed me to go and speak to their people. Why? Because they get sad, seasonal. Interesting, they are right on the equator. They are 10,000 feet up top of an 11,000 foot mountain. It's on the equator and it has a glacier, this huge glacier at the top. It's on the equator and it's got a glacier, but the elevation is that high. 
The thing is, they're in, I oh, always remember, it was just the most eerie thing. They are in cloud. The temperature, they're on, they're on, the, they're on the equator. The temperature doesn't change. Morning and night, 11 degrees Celsius. And they are in cloud 95% of the day. They don't see the sun. They're that high. It's cool. It's gray. And they get sad. It's huge. They don't get to see natural sunlight. So that's real. Make sure you factor in. And I know that I know the whole skin cancer concerns, you know, with some of you. That's cool. Use your protection, but get out in the sun early morning, late afternoon, so that you're getting that sunlight to turn your happies on. It's important. How do you know if you've got low serotonin? Well, yeah, it's sad. That's it. Like low, consistently low, not just an off day. We can all have off days, but you know, that cranky, aggressive, maybe uh, fatigued, your sleep's crappy, a uh, little bit frantic, uh, appetite goes away. That's really common. Uh, can have the, and it's the you know, naturopath thinking thing that when we, when we're in that state, our cortisol spikes, it floods our gut. And we, you know, it puts the fire out in our belly that I've talked about in previous episodes. When we're in that state, we tend to crave things, you know, sweet carbohydrate rich foods. You know, you can be off just for a day or something. And that doesn't mean your serotonin is low, but if you're consistently experiencing those kind of symptoms, well, maybe it's a bit low, get out into the sun guys. So like I said, that's the first way. How to increase your serotonin? Daylight, sunlight, sunlight helps. It just helps. The other thing is with serum, the big thing with serotonin is that you can't actually get it from food. You can't, but you can get it from what's called tryptophan, which is an amino acid that turns into serotonin in your brain. Now, tryptophan is found mainly in really high protein foods. Your high protein foods, like you know your, your, your animal products, if you do animal products on veggie, I don't do that, nuts and seeds and things. But just eating tryptophan rich foods doesn't work. Why? Because we've got this thing in our body, which I love. It's called the blood, it's called the blood brain barrier. It's like this little protective sheath around the brain and it, it controls what goes in and out of your brain. And tryptophan on its own won't do it. Why? The problem with that is the fact that tryptophan is usually, it is, it's found in, in abundance with other amino acids, but, and the thing is that because they're high too, usually they'll be taken up and cross the blood brain barrier before the tryptophan does. So it's a, it's a little bit tricky. It's a little bit tricky. <laughs> um, I am full of happy hormones today because I went surfing this morning and I had a wonderful time. <laughs> Guys, there is a way you can hack the system. We want to get that tryptophan out of our foods and to turn our serotonin on. And there's really cool research and I'll chuck it in the show notes for those techo people like me who like to read that stuff. We need them. We need good carbs, to take amino acids like tryptophan up into the brain. And that's, I spoke on episode 28 about, about people who are on a keto diet, for instance, that really low carb diet generally end up quite depressed and cranky. For those of you who are wanting to know a few foods or snacky kind of things that you can do to increase your serotonin, here's a few ideas. Imagine you have whole wheat bread. So brown bread, we call it. Wheat bread, they call it in the US. So a whole wheat, close to nature, no bum glue. I talked about in the early episodes, whole wheat bread with, a protein if you're going to do meat or cheese that's it um oatmeal porridge with a handful of nuts have your oatmeal for breakfast and and, and, a, and a handful of nuts for the extra protein things like salmon and brown rice or any kind of protein and brown rice not white rice white rice leaches minerals out of your body brown rice remember plums or pineapple and your favorite crackers whatever your crackers are easy snack other ways to be able to trigger serotonin are exercise so again i'm paddling out there surfing in the sunlight Wah! that's perfect for me you might be someone who walks or swims or runs or dances or does yoga or whatever it is they're all cool think about yeah you want to tap into the tryptophan to trigger for the serotonin but if you do it in communities like me when i go out and surf i catch up with mates when i'm out there you'll also then get your hit of your endorphins and your dopamine and you're dropping your stress levels of things like cortisol at the same time. Super easy way to do it. So do your, do your exercise in community. It works. Walk with a mate in the sun early in the morning so you get, so you get a bit of hit of everything. Now, I know some of you just want the shortcut and you think, oh, I just want a supplement. Like some people just take the drugs from the doctor. Mm, supplements are, are pretty mixed kind of results. They, it, they don't work so well. Try some of the hints that I've given you 
because they do show to bring the results. Now, I've talked about in episode 18 about enzymes. No use having all those healthy foods and doing it all right if your gut chemistry is out of balance. If you have not listened to episode 18, go back and listen to it where I talk about digestive enzymes. Important. A couple of other foods you might want to play with. I am a, the biggest chili head. Like I am the biggest chili head. I chuck chilies on everything. Chilies are really good for releasing endorphins. Caffeine gives you a dopamine rush. You caffeine people, it lifts your dopamine. Dark chocolate, like for real, 70 or 80% dark chocolate helps to trigger dopamine and serotonin. Yes, it does. And I'll put a link in the uh, the show notes to the the happy chocolate that I eat because it's actually got the amino acids in it. Yes, it does. Dark chocolate with amino acids. So good. I love that we can change our moods by changing our food. Change our moods by moving our body. Changing our moods by being in community with other people. There's so many cool ways to be able to elevate our moods. Think about giving it a lift. I'm living with four healthy life hacks with this episode. Number one, move your body, but move it with someone else. Move your body, do some exercise, but move it with someone else. Number two, play with your foods. Check out the show notes for some of those food hints I just gave you. Have a bit of a play with it. Get that tryptophan up. And also play with others. Give compliments from your heart. Just be a really good human being. We need to be in connection. And when we do that, that's going to turn on your oxytocin. That's going to lift that happy hormone. They're all there waiting to be done. And get out there, enjoy the sunshine. Don't do it from 10 till 2 because if you're going to panic about skin cancers and things, I surf at sunrise for a reason. I get out there with mates, I'm in community, and such a big part of surfing is just chatting out the back of the waves. It's just the, such a buzz. That's my thing. My Every happy hormone gets turned on in that morning session. So pick, even if you picked one of those guys, you don't have to do them all at once, but at least do one of those healthy life hacks. I know they'll start to elevate your moods. If you want to check out the show notes for this episode, head to www.healthylifehacks.com.au and you'll grab them there. And so tune into the next episode when I'm going to be talking about when we push to achieve goals or achieve anything in life, we actually push it away. I'm going to teach you how to be attracting in life. I want to thank you for being here today. If you enjoyed my podcast, please let me know by leaving a review where you're listening in from. Every month, I draw one lucky person who leaves a review to have a free one-hour consultation with me. If you would like to receive a free copy of my Feed Your Body ebook, simply click the link in the comments below and join my newsletter and we will get that free ebook sent to you. I welcome your emails and you can write to me at podcast at healthylifehacks.com.au. Until next time, remember when it comes to life, live it, love it, and get on with it.